Nestled in the beautiful Eastern Alps of Italy lies the Stava Valley, a pristine hotspot of the surrounding Alpine resort. Then, a terrifying tidal wave of mud surges down the valley at more than 50 miles per hour, destroying everything in its path. 268 people perish in less than four minutes. Now using advanced computer graphics, we reveal exactly what went wrong. Disasters don't just happen. They're triggered by a chain of critical events. Unravel the fateful decisions in those final seconds from disaster. Europe, Italy, Tessero, July 19th, 1985. The peaceful village of Tessero lies in the Stava Valley. Its idyllic surroundings make it a popular vacation spot. Today, visitors and locals alike are out enjoying the sunshine. 12, 10 p.m. Umberto and Clemente de Florian are helping their father, Lucio, with his carpentry business. It was a typical summer's day. I was 15 years old, and me and my brother were going to do some work for our family business, owned by my father. They load their van and head up Stava Valley Road. 12.15 p.m. Back in Tessero, Alma Treadle is home from work, serving the lunch that her mother prepared for the family. That day I came back. The table was laid. Everything was ready to eat. 12.20 p.m. 20-year-old Lucia Morandini is helping her father Mario in his sports shop. That day I thought that seeing as a new supply of stock had just arrived, I chose a present for my father because it was his birthday in a couple of days' time. It's a perfect day in the Southern Alps. But further up the mountain, there is something that makes the Stava Valley far from normal. Since the discovery of rich mineral deposits in the 16th century, Prestival Mountain has been mined. Local residents coexist with the mining companies who work the mountain for fluorite, a valuable chemical substance. Extracting fluorite from mountain rock produces large amounts of waste material in the form of sand and water, known in mining as tailings. It's also the name given to the massive dams where the tailings are filtered off and collected. There are two of these tailings dams in the Stava Valley, one built above the other. 12.22 p.m. Umberto, Clemente, and their father Lucio are driving up the road from Tessero straight towards the dams. I remember that my father was singing because the next day was the 25th anniversary of the Tesero Quad. In town, Alma Treadle and her family are enjoying their lunch at the kitchen table. And in their sports shop, Lucio Morondini thinks she has found the perfect present for her father. We went to the storeroom. We opened the boxes and took out all the clothes. There was a nice tracksuit that I wanted him to try on. Over the years, the 100-foot-high tailings dams have become part of the scenery. Obscured by a dense pine forest, they are largely ignored by the locals. We all knew the dams were there. But we never imagined there would be the slightest danger. Today, all that will change. Twelve twenty-two and fifty-five seconds. Without warning, the dam bursts. At 
At first, no one knows what it is. I saw the smoke on the horizon and I asked you, what's that? It really looks like fire. At 12, 23 and 25 seconds, more than 60 million gallons of mud, sand and water from the two dams course down the valley. The town of Tassero is less than three miles away and directly in its path. We heard a huge noise. We thought it was roadworks. At 12, 23 and 45 seconds, the colossal mudslide hurtles into the small town of Stava, where more than 100 hotel guests are having lunch. In an instant, they are all killed. Traveling at 55 miles per hour, the mudslide now races towards Umberto, Clemente, and Lucio de Florian. My father didn't waste a second. He said, get out quickly and get up the slope. 12, 24, and 45 seconds. The wave of mud continues on its path of destruction. Next in line, to Sarah. Stay tuned for more seconds from disaster. Right now, get up to a $100 value Bridgestone reward card when you buy a set of eligible Bridgestone tires. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Very good. Oh, and this throbbing sinus pressure. Whenever I have a cold or allergy, I need relief. I feel so congested, I'm stuffed up. I just might blow. Sudafed PE relieves sinus pressure. And the medicine in Sudafed PE relieves nasal congestion in minutes. Ah. Okay, kids, let's turn to chapter three. Sudafed PE. Get your head back where it belongs. And for longer lasting relief, ask your pharmacist for Sudafed 12 hour and 24 hour. They're behind the counter. I smoked for forever. I can't count how many times I tried quitting. I can't tell you the number of times I tried quitting. Yeah, I worried about my health, but even that didn't help me quit. I would start out strong, then my willpower would fade. Now I know. For me, smoking is more than a habit. Smoking is a nicotine addiction. That's why I found it so hard to quit. That's why it was so hard for me to quit. The good news? Proven medical advances have been made in understanding nicotine addiction. For more information on how to quit smoking and how support can help, visit MyTimeToQuit.com or call 1-866-239-8729. I didn't have to blame myself. I know what kept stopping me. For free information about a plan to quit smoking and to find out about a prescription treatment option, visit MyTimeToQuit.com or call 1-866-239-8729. Now I understand. I think about quitting in a whole different way. I knew it was my time to quit. I knew it was my time. I knew it was my time to quit. This time I did it. Visit MyTimeToQuit.com or call now. Before you hit the road, you probably have a routine. Adjust the mirrors. Check. Click your seatbelt, find your favorite station, and avoid hitting the mailbox. Check, check, and you get the idea. Most insurance companies give you a discount for driving safely. Only Allstate gives you that plus an extra bonus check. Every six months, you're accident-free. For being extra careful, you deserve an extra reward. That's Allstate, Stan. Can you afford not to be in good hands? It isn't how many days she's been alive or his net worth. It's their weight in carbon dioxide. Everyone creates the greenhouse gas, CO2, but it's our actions that decide how much. When we waste electricity, fuel, and water, the number goes up. When we recycle and conserve, the number goes down. So, what's your number? Visit PreserveOurPlanet.com because what you do counts. We now return to Seconds from Disaster. It's lunchtime in the Italian mountain town of Tessero. A peaceful afternoon, but none of the 2,500 inhabitants know that a massive mudslide is surging towards them. Just north of town, it has already destroyed the van belonging to Clemente, Umberto, and Lucio de Florian. 
At 12.25 p.m., the mudslide engulfs Tessero. Alma Treadle is at home having lunch with her four-year-old son, Marco, her husband, Stefano, and her mother, Maria, when she hears a rumbling noise. I hadn't quite leaned over the balcony when I saw what was coming down the road. Seconds later, more than 65 million gallons of mud hits Alma Street, destroying 17 of its 25 houses. Further down the street, Lucia Morandini is working in the sports shop with her father. My father was trying on the tracksuit when we heard a huge noise. Out of curiosity, I said, I'll just go and have a look. The devastation continues as the mudslide follows the quickest route down the mountain. Entire buildings, streets, and forests are wiped out. 12, 25, and 44 seconds, the ancient bridge that has stood for 10 centuries is almost completely destroyed. Finally, 40 seconds later, it's over. The mud crashes into the valley floor, where at last it loses momentum and flows into the Avisio River. The catastrophe lasts just three and a half minutes, but it leaves more than three miles of chaos in its wake. The beautiful Stava Valley has been reduced to a wasteland. Clemente de Florian narrowly escapes the mudslide by running uphill. I stopped and turned around. There was nothing left. Absolute silence. Not even a bird or a fly. Nothing. Their van is totally wrecked, submerged in mud more than 160 feet from where they left it. Clemente frantically searches for his brother and father. I heard my brother's voice calling me, and I just saw his face sticking out of the mud. I couldn't move because I was completely covered in mud. Then I saw my brother and called out to him. So I started to scrape some of the mud off him, and he immediately said, Where's Dad? Meanwhile, about 300 feet away, local sculptor Giuseppe Mick sees the destruction from his workshop window and races to the scene. He's one of the first rescuers to get there. I saw a figure, a human figure lying, hugging a tree. When it spoke, I went closer. I recognized by the voice that it was Alma, Alma Trete. The force of the mudslide catapults Alma over her first floor balcony, and Giuseppe finds her nearly a thousand feet from where her home used to be. I had no idea where I was. I could just feel grass below me, and I didn't know what was happening. Giuseppe and his friends make a stretcher out of Alma's jacket. They carry her to safer ground and a waiting ambulance. Lucia Morandini is completely buried in the mud and wreckage of what used to be her father's sports shop. Only a small gap in the debris allows her to breathe and stay alive. I was scared I would suffocate, or die of thirst, or hunger, a very slow death, and that I would prefer to end it quickly. But I couldn't even do that. I couldn't move at all. Luckily, people hear Lucia's cries for help and dig her out of the mud. She's rushed to an ambulance and taken to the hospital. 1 p.m. Just half an hour after the accident, local firefighters, Alpine Rescue, and police are on the scene. In all, 7,000 rescuers take part in the recovery operation. A fleet of 19 helicopters and 26 ambulances are on standby, ready to carry survivors to the hospital. Unfortunately, out of the 281 missing, only 13 people are pulled out alive. 
Umberto de Florian, Lucia Morandini, and Alma Treadle are three of those 13. While they're treated for trauma and broken bones, rescuers continue to search through the rubble for their families. I kept asking after my son, my mother, and my husband. But they wouldn't tell me anything. 89 men, 120 women, and 59 children perish in the mudslide. A total of 268 lives lost. Alma's husband, Stefano, her mother, Maria, and her four-year-old son, Marco, are among them. Lucia's father, Mario, and Umberto's father, Lucio, also perish. It's one of the worst dam bursts in history. After three weeks, the rescue operation is over. The town of Tessero is in shock, and Italy as a whole feels a deep sense of loss. Not one, but two dams have burst and finding out why is a national priority. What caused the two dams to break and unleash 47 million gallons of mud on the Stava Valley? Now we rewind the events of that fateful day and go deep into the investigation to reveal what really happened. Advanced computer simulation will go where no camera can, into the heart of the disaster zone. On the day of the tragedy, the regional court launches an inquiry to determine the exact events leading up to the disaster. The investigation team is complete with mudslide experts. Using their data, we can now piece together the chain of events to find out what really caused this terrible tragedy. The immediate focus is on the two dams. What caused them to burst? Early claims are that the trigger was a natural phenomenon. Was one of the worst dam bursts caused by an earthquake? It was a deafening noise. I got out of my car. The ground was shaking. The car was shaking. It really seemed like there was an earthquake. Mudslide expert Professor Richard Chandler was a consultant for the accident inquiry. The foothills of the Alps, where Stava is, are a, an earthquake area. One can speculate, and one can also rely on evidence from a seismometer in a valley next door to the Stava Valley, which was in place to record possible earthquakes. There's a seismometer in nearby Cavalese, and investigators study the readings for the exact time that the dam burst, 12.22 p.m. Amazingly, it shows a substantial tremor, followed by another large spike 30 seconds later. The investigation team thinks it's onto something, earthquake activity. they carry out more detailed research. Other seismometers in the region barely register the tremor, if at all. This is highly unusual. It means that the tremors were very localized, too localized to be an earthquake. The dam bursts could not have been caused by an earthquake. Investigators need a new lead. They know that the Southern Alps are an abundant source of minerals. The region is dotted with mines, and the standard practice for exposing a new rock face is to blast it. Could a controlled explosion be what they see on the seismograph? Could that have caused the dams to rupture? Professor Giovanni Tassati was an expert witness at the Stava Valley disaster trial. There were discussions about the effects of explosions being carried out at nearby mines that could have been transmitted to the area and could have been the trigger of the collapse. To test this theory, the investigation team tries something unique. They set up controlled explosion in three mines within a three-mile radius of Stava to see if such a blast could have been the culprit. 
explosive experts detonate the dynamite. Analyzing the readings, the investigation team is baffled. The explosions barely register on the equipment. These seismographs look nothing like the one recorded on the day of the accident. Whatever caused the two Stava tailings dams to burst, it wasn't an underground explosion. So what did cause the two seismometer readings 30 seconds apart? Investigators realize that they must have been caused by the dam burst itself. They deduce that the first shock is the upper dam collapsing. The contents of the upper dam pour into the lower dam. Under massive pressure from this huge load, the lower dam also crumbles. Mud, water, and sand explode from the dam and smash into the opposite valley wall, causing the second tremor on the seismograph. Investigators now know how the dams gave way. Their next task is to find out why. If external factors like an earthquake or an explosion were not the trigger, it must have been internal. Something inside one of the dams caused the collapse. And since the upper dam collapsed first, it becomes the new focus of the investigation. Tailings dams are widely used in the mining world. Fluorite production requires massive quantities of water. It makes up 95% of all waste products in the process. A huge machine called a hydrocyclone then separates the sand from the water. Sand builds up into the wall of the dam. The hydrocyclone pumps the water into the center of the dam, creating a reservoir. The safety of the structure relies on the outer wall of the dam, which remains dry and solid as the liquid in the middle slowly drains out through massive pipes. Tailings dams are effectively self-building. The more waste, the bigger the wall of the dam. The two dams at Stava grew from ground level to over 80 feet high in two decades, dwarfing the buildings around them. Although not unusual for tailings dams, investigators decide to look into their design. The investigation finds that the mining company has kept detailed records of their upkeep of the two dams. They examine them and make a breakthrough. Six months before the disaster, the mining company suddenly has a problem. In January 1985, a small landslide occurs on the outer wall of the upper dam. This creates a giant hole in the wall, a 65-foot gap for water to leak out. It continues until March, when the mining company makes an emergency repair. In May, they make more repairs and have to drain both the upper and lower dams. The mining company brings them back into operation on the 15th of July, 1985, four days before the tragedy. The investigation team focuses heavily on the upper dam. Something strange must have been going on at least six months prior, causing it to disintegrate. But what? The team realizes that the answer is all around them. It's everywhere. It's water. With the absence of any external forces, such as an earthquake or underground explosion, the only explanation for the collapse of the dam is through a weakening of the dam's wall, caused by the water inside. 
the moment there is any significant amount of water in the face of the dam itself, then it would immediately become unstable and would collapse. One can do simple experiments on the beach with a bucket and spade and demonstrate when you add water how much less stable wet sand is than dry sand. This is the problem in this particular case. The small landslide and subsequent hole that appears in the upper dam wall six months earlier is proof. Water from inside the reservoir saturates the outer wall, creating the 65-foot hole. Six months later, the whole wall caves, unleashing a wave of mud that kills 268 people. But the mystery is far from over. Investigators now know that water caused the dam burst. But how did it penetrate the outer wall? What was the final trigger? Seconds from disaster will continue in a moment. A lot can happen in a year, and last year on planet Earth, it did. The good, the bad, and the eye-opening. Earth Report, State of the Planet. It's all part of an Earth Day special, tonight at 9 on Nat Geo. Sunday, a 64-year-old scrapbook arrives at a museum, an album of a happy life, in a camp with friends and picnics and sing-alongs. Pictures of a joyous time. But we know who these people are, because there's another scrapbook that shows what they were doing when not at play. These are the Auschwitz albums. How it was, Nazi scrapbooks from hell, Sunday at 9 on National Geographic. Deciding on a color? Uh huh. Let's start with some idea cards. That'll get you to the right one. We're here because we've been there with the tools, products, and advice to get it done right. True value. Start right, start here. Jed Clampett, a poor mountaineer barely keeping his family fed, when in the summer of 63, he was shooting at some food, becoming a millionaire overnight. Soon afterward, he loaded up his truck and moved to Beverly Hills. I was suspicious of this whole Texas tea theory. A new investigation reveals that in the summer before Jed moved away from there, he switched his car insurance to Geico, saving a substantial sum of money. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back pain? You don't have to just rely on pain relievers. Now you can take two of these. Dr. Scholl's Pain Relief Orthotics with Shock Guard. They're clinically proven and absorb jarring shock with every step you take. Take Dr. Scholl's for back pain or knee pain. in the first ultra adaptable room from Marriott. This is the AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan card. You know what's great about this card? Wherever you go nationwide, your coverage travels with you. And that's just one of the many reasons you need the card you can trust. Because with AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans, you can apply year-round, talk with personal health insurance advisors, and so much more. If you're turning 65 or older, or you've already enrolled in a Medicare Supplement Plan, call for this free information kit in Medicare Guide. These are the only Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans exclusively endorsed by AARP. These plans, insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company, help cover some of your medical expenses not covered by Medicare alone. This could save you thousands of dollars. Want your choice of doctors or hospitals, virtually no claim forms, and no referrals needed to see a specialist? Call for your free kit. Yep, this is one great card. Tomorrow. Worshipping a Messiah. I am the embodiment of God. I am divinity and humanity combined. This New Mexico cult awaits the end of the world, looking for meaning. I took off my clothes and I laid naked on his bed. He just held me and 
A whole new picture opened up to me of God. Inside a Cult premieres tomorrow at 9 on National Geographic. And now back to seconds from disaster. A dam burst in Italy unleashes more than 66 million gallons of water and mud, which tear through the valley below. 268 people perish. Now, using advanced computer graphics based on accident reports, we go deep into the investigation to unravel the tragic chain of events. The dam burst triggers when two tailings dams, huge reservoirs containing wastewater from a mining process, collapse. The investigation team is now certain that the upper dam caved in like a sandcastle. But it's not supposed to work this way. A pipe should drain excess wastewater before it reaches critical volume. Too much water pressure and the water is forced into the wall, causing it to crumble. Investigators are sure this happened, but how? They start to examine why. They study the meteorological records for the 66 years before the accident and make a fascinating discovery. Maximum rainfall in the Stava Valley occurs between May and August. And 1985 was one of the wettest years on record. Almost 22% more rain fell than normal. It's a good lead for the investigation team, who's sure that the record rainfall played a part in raising the volume of water. But they're not convinced that it's the only contributing factor. They know that the dams must be designed to deal with something as foreseeable as heavy rain. So they look into other reasons for a dramatic rise in water levels. Suddenly, it all seems obvious. Every year, the neighboring ski resort of Latimar attracts thousands of skiers and snowboarders to its snow-capped mountains. The winter before the accident had been a particularly good one for skiing. A thick snow cover grew thicker with regular snow showers. But at the end of the season, something happened that would play a significant part in the disaster only a few months later. In the spring in the Alps, the snow that fell during the winter melts, and melts relatively rapidly in the course of a few weeks. Investigators calculate that the water levels produced by the thaw that year were higher than average. Some of this meltwater would flow down the valley through rivers, streams, and underground springs into the tailings dams, raising the water level inside. This solves the pressure question. But investigators can't believe that increased rainfall and melting snow alone are responsible for such a catastrophic failure. The first time the upper dam sprung a leak was in January, before the rain and snow could have played a part. Investigators desperately need a new lead. They now concentrate on the heart of the accident, the wrecked dams themselves. The breach in the upper dam wall is clearly visible, but the lower dam and reservoir are totally destroyed. The investigation team calls in heavy machinery to clear the site, and they begin the arduous task of sifting through the ruins of the dams in search of a clue. After searching through 360,000 tons of mud, silt, and rubble in the remains of the upper dam, they find one. It's the drainage pipe, and it's broken. Now they're onto something. They take a closer look at the pipe. Crucially, it shows signs of an earlier repair. 
a length of the pipe was replaced. But over the years since the repair, the weight of mining waste or tailings placed on top of it has caused it to sag. Then with the passage of the years, the tailings built up above this pipe and the pipe could have pulled out of its end a joint, allowing water, which was draining the upper dam, to be discharged into the tailings at a location quite close to the outer face of the dam. Eventually, it would have pulled free from its anchor points, leaving gaps and rendering the pipe useless. Now, instead of draining water away, it's actually leaking water back into the reservoir, raising the pressure inside and forcing more water to seep through the dam wall, weakening it more and more. But when did the leak from this pipe reach critical levels? Investigators realized that the emergency repairs done just two months before the accident are to blame. To carry out the repairs, the mining company had to empty each reservoir. As the water was drained out, the pipe could have bent further out of shape, causing bigger gaps to appear. Then, three weeks before the dam bursts, the reservoirs were refilled. Four days before, mining begins again. Waste tailings are pumped into the dam, but the broken pipe can't drain away excess water. And now, rainfall and meltwater are at peak levels. The pressure against the walls from these combined sources of water is too much for the dam to contain, and the water inside the reservoir forces its way out. It takes the path of least resistance through the outer wall of the dam, stable only when dry, this wall becomes saturated by the fluid seeping into it. The stability of the dams at Starva required that the water was kept away from the outer slope of the dam. If any water got anywhere near the outer slope of the dam, it was inherently going to collapse. Finally, something has to give. The wall of the upper dam collapses, releasing 360,000 tons of sand and water, which surge down the valley destroying everything. But something still puzzles investigators. They've rarely seen devastation on this scale. It's hard to imagine. 268 people die. Three hotels, six factories, and 53 houses disappear. This solitary tree is all that's left of a dense forest, ripped from the ground by the massive force. Stava Valley is totally destroyed, and investigators are about to discover something very unusual about the mudslide. We'll continue with more seconds from disaster in a moment. If anybody had told me that I would end up teaching in a high school diploma program for ex-offenders, I would have laughed out loud. Judith DeVries co-founded an adult high school for ex-offenders. She's earning her Ph.D. online from Walden University. If somebody told me today I could ever do this again, I would cry. When you earn your master's or Ph.D. online at Walden University, you gain the knowledge and credentials you need to make a positive change in your career and in the lives of others. Visit our website or call this toll-free number to consult with a Walden advisor. Walden faculty are practicing leaders in their fields. Our dynamic online courses fit your life and offer a rich, interactive learning experience. We also offer financial aid options. Call or go online now and we'll waive your application fee. Walden University provides an opportunity for people to receive outstanding educational credentials while living out your dream about changing the world. Walden University, a higher degree, a higher purpose. Drive a 2008 midsize H3 with zero due at signing. Tax title license and dealer fees extra.
Seven Up has 100% natural flavors for naturally better taste. And who can resist that? Uh. Seven Up with 100% natural flavors. Most of us look at the world like nothing bad will ever happen. An Allstate agent knows that all too often, it does. And they offer innovative ways to help protect your world. Like accident forgiveness, identity restoration coverage, and life insurance for the unthinkable. These days, you need more than just an insurance agent. You need an Allstate agent. Someone who makes it their business to help protect you. Let's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Between cappuccinos, mochaccinos, and cups of double trouble, you've got a sugar situation. But Splenda Flavors for Coffee gives you rich, delicious flavor with no calories. Splenda. Imagine life sweeter. If you've got one of these, you probably use these to keep them healthy. But why? When you can get exactly the same brand name medications for a lot less from 1-800-PETMEDS. For fast service, free shipping, and big savings, call 1-800-PETMEDS now or order online. Beware the hungry monster in your home. Incandescent light bulbs are power-hungry tyrants who greedily consume energy. You may ask, what can I do? Never fear! Four times as efficient and lasting up to ten times longer. A compact fluorescent light beats an incandescent bulb any day of the week. Let compact fluorescent lights release you from the dark ages and bring you into an age of enlightenment. Seconds from disaster now continues. A catastrophic dam burst in the mountains of northern Italy unleashes 66 million gallons of mud and water, drowning the valley below. As investigators pour over eyewitness testimonies, they begin to realize there's something very unusual about the destructive power of this mudslide. There were trees and soil flying through the air, even the roof of a house. It would be impossible to get out of the whale. The speed of a train or a lorry or something. The devastation were felt all the way down to the, the small town of Tessero. What's so unusual about the reports is the speed and violence of the mudslide. From the seismometer readings, investigators calculate that the mudslide reaches an astonishing 56 miles per hour. This is more like a tidal wave. Investigators study similar natural phenomena from around the world. This is actual footage of a mudslide in Russia. Although on a much smaller scale, it's behaving in a very similar way to the dam burst in the Stava Valley. With the speed of water, but the destructive force of mud. Studying records of dam bursts like this one gives investigators the answers they're looking for. They believe they know why the Stava mudslide caused devastation on such a massive scale. But they have to travel back in time to be sure. 210 seconds before disaster, the upper dam's outer wall saturates with water but it's still solid. Another second, and the dam breaks. The outer wall collapses with such enormous power that it registers higher on the Richter scale than normal earth tremors in this region. This 1950s footage of a real earthquake in Japan shows what happens to the ground when a shock wave is so powerful that the solid earth acts just like a liquid. It's called liquefaction. Liquefaction occurs when water under high pressure enters a solid structure made up of grains, like sand, forcing them apart. 
They become suspended in the water, making a very dense liquid, almost twice the density of water, but with all its fluid properties. It is exactly what happens when the upper dam collapses in Stava. As the outer shell disappeared down the slope, the tailings behind no longer had any support and they become suspended in the water that surrounds them. You finish up with a high concentration of quite heavy particles suspended in the water. So it's like a double density material. And this liquefies, turns into a fluid and flows down the slope. Investigators now understand the critical chain of events that caused the catastrophe. Two hundred nine seconds. The upper dam is turning to quicksand. The grains have lost their ability to stick together as a solid structure. One hundred ninety eight seconds. This dense liquid is now pouring out of the upper dam and into the lower dam, which is critically overloaded. For 19 seconds, the liquefied mud from both dams collects and grows. As the dams disintegrate, they throw enormous clouds of dust high into the air. It looked like smoke to Umberto, Clemente, and their father, Lucio. It really looked like a fire. 179 seconds left. The lower dam reaches bursting point. It collapses, unleashing the liquefied tailings. 159 seconds. The mud flow strikes the village of Stava, half a mile away, destroying 24 houses and three hotels, where 100 tourists are having lunch. They all perish. 99 seconds remain. The mud wave hits the northern reaches of the town of Tessero. Umberto and Clemente are in their father's van driving up the valley road. My father didn't waste a second. He said, get out quickly and get up the slope. Umberto and Clemente escape, but the vicious wave kills their father, Lucio. 79 seconds. The flow reaches the street where Alma Treadle lives and wipes out 17 homes. She hears the roar and goes to the balcony where she sees the mudslide hurtling down the street. I didn't have time to say a word before the whole house fell away from under my feet. As the house collapses, Alma is hurled from the balcony and ends up almost a thousand feet away. 51 seconds. Lucia Morandini is in the storeroom of her father Mario's sports shop. She hears the rumble of the mudslide and opens the door. It seemed like a hurricane. There were trees and soil flying through the air. I was hurled back into the storeroom. I had no time to think. What feels like a hurricane to Lucia is the blast wave that precedes the mudslide all the way down the valley. Powerful enough to destroy buildings and uproot trees, it looks like a whitish cloud made up of fine sand from the tailings dams. An eyewitness in Tessero took this photo. 40 seconds left. The mudslide slams into the ancient bridge of Tessero. The wave of mud is so deep that some of it crashes over the 100 foot high bridge. In just three and a half minutes, more than 60 million gallons of mud, water, and debris destroy an area of nearly 30 miles. Tailings dams operate all over the world. Are thousands of people at risk? 
is the disaster at Stava an isolated incident? Investigators need to find out, so they turn to the maintenance records for the two tailings dams. Their search yields shocking results. Stay tuned. The conclusion in a moment. A lot can happen in a year, and last year on planet Earth, it did. The good, the bad, and the eye-opening. Earth Report, State of the Planet. It's all part of an Earth Day special, tonight at 9 on Nat Geo. A 64-year-old scrapbook arrives at a museum. Pictures of a joyous time. But there's another scrapbook that shows what they were doing when not at play. How it was, Nazi scrapbooks from hell, Sunday at 9 on National Geographic. Attention drivers statewide. If you are insured with Allstate, Geico, State Farm, or any other car insurer, you may be overpaying by hundreds of dollars. Find out how to get immediate savings through AIGdirect.com. What would it take to get you to switch your car insurance? If we told you that you could save $364 a year, wouldn't you pick up the phone? Start dialing, because you could save that much. People who switch from Geico saved around $370. From Allstate, $430. Your savings could be higher, like this driver who switched, or this one. And no other company gives you AIG security advantage that includes roadside assistance at no additional cost. Immediate savings available through AIGdirect.com. Call for a free rate quote today. Call 1-800-211-SAVE for a free rate quote. You could save hundreds of dollars. That number again is 1-800-211-SAVE. Call now or visit AIGdirect.com. I'm on a mission to get everyone up off their romp. And I'm doing it with granola. At Kashi, our whole grain granola helps your body work better, so you feel better. Because together, our seven whole grains not only have fiber, they also have protein. So, you ready to feel better? We'll get you started with a free sample of granola and fun ways to get off your romp. Get your free granola at Kashi.com. Kashi, seven whole grains on a mission. Can you have a beautiful lawn and use less water? Actually, yes, thanks to Scott's Turf Builder Water Smart Formula. A lawn fed the water smart way grows healthier roots that use water more efficiently. So your lawn needs less, saving you thousands of gallons a year. Smart. Scott's Turf Builder. Feed the lawn. Water smart. Thinking about LASIK? See what LASIK Plus can do for you. With LASIK Plus, you're choosing the nation's leading LASIK provider. And now LASIK Plus makes it easy for you to have LASIK today and pay nothing for 12 months interest-free. I chose LASIK Plus because the numbers made sense. Call now to speak to a LASIK professional and schedule a free, no-risk, no-obligation LASIK vision exam with one of our doctors and find out if you're a candidate for LASIK. I chose LASIK Plus because my first exam was so thorough, I knew I was in good hands. Hundreds of thousands of people love the great results and personalized care they get with LASIK Plus. I chose LASIK Plus because they have a great track record for getting the best results. Other LASIK providers may require minimum monthly payments. Call LASIK Plus to get LASIK today and pay nothing for 12 months, interest-free. This offer won't last, so call the number on your screen now. It's time to see what LASIK Plus can do for you. Call 1-800-216-2020. 1-800-216-2020. Tomorrow, worshiping a messiah. I am the embodiment of God. I am divinity and humanity combined. This New Mexico cult awaits the end of the world, looking for meaning. I took off my clothes and I laid naked on his bed. He just held me and a whole new picture opened up to me of God. Inside a Cult premieres tomorrow at 9 on National Geographic. You're watching Seconds from Disaster. A mining dam collapses in the southern Italian Alps. Now investigators are scouring through maintenance records to find out if the company in charge regularly monitors its stability. In 1974, 
the municipality of Tercero ordered Fluoramine, the company that owned the mine, to carry out inspections. Results of the tests showed that the slope angle of the upper dam was exceptionally high and its instability was nearing danger levels. The engineer who carried out these tests was surprised that they had not collapsed earlier. This should have served as a warning. But nothing was done, the situation was covered up, and work carried on as normal. This was 10 years before the disaster. The findings prompt the investigation team to dig deeper. They discover a catalog of errors. The soil is completely unsuitable to support the dams, and the ground is too marshy to allow adequate drainage, an essential requirement for their stability. Without proper drainage, the walls can't dry out and become solid or stable. Also, the foundations for the upper dam have been partially laid on the lower dam, which means that the upper dam has been partly built on the wet mud of the lower dam, rather than on solid ground. But most amazing of all is the inadequate repair of the broken pipe in the upper dam. With so many problems, the mining dams were an accident waiting to happen. The investigation team's findings were compelling enough to seek a prosecution, and in 1988, they went to trial. The Stava Valley disaster inquiry took seven years to complete. In the end, eight people from the five companies that ran the mine since the building of the upper dam and two members of the regional council in charge of mine safety were found guilty of culpable disaster and multiple manslaughter. They were all given prison sentences and the magistrate noted in his ruling that if one-tenth of the money spent on the trial had been invested in the safety of the tailings dams, the accident would not have taken place. Today, Alma Treadle has to live with the loss of her four-year-old son, Marco, her husband, Stefano, and her mother, Maria. She almost died herself, yet she no longer feels resentment towards the people responsible. I don't think it's up to me to judge these men. I'm not even going to start. I know I used to feel angry because I thought, you had the duty to make safety checks and you didn't do them. Otherwise, this wouldn't have happened. But, you know, feeling resentment for the rest of your life towards these people, you just end up feeling bad yourself. So I said to God, I leave them to you. I leave them in your hands. After the disaster, Clemente de Florian took over his father's carpentry business. His brother Umberto, transformed by the events of the trial surrounding the disaster, became a lawyer. After recovering in the hospital, Lucia Morandini eventually took over her father's sports shop and has since expanded the business, opening five new shops in neighboring towns. She now has a nine-year-old son, Igor. Seventeen years after the tragedy, Graziano Lucchi, who lost his parents, co-founded the Stava Foundation as a reminder of what happened on July 19, 1985. It's important for people to know what happened. We especially want people to know the causes, who is responsible for this tragedy, because only this knowledge will allow us to try to avoid other similar tragedies from happening elsewhere. But the warnings have not been heeded. Although the safety laws surrounding tailings dams were improved in Italy, Lessons are still to be learned elsewhere in the aftermath of the Stava trial. Since 1985, there have been no fewer than 33 similar accidents worldwide, eight of them occurring in the United States. In Stava, the mine never reopened after the tragedy, but following extensive restoration, the valley has regained its former beauty. The tourists have come back and the locals have helped each other rebuild their community and return to a peaceful, idyllic way of life.
nestled in the beautiful eastern Alps of Italy lies the Stava Valley, a pristine hotspot of the surrounding Alpine resort. Then, a terrifying tidal wave of mud surges down the valley at more than 50 miles per hour, destroying everything in its path. 268 people perish in less than four minutes. Now using advanced computer graphics, we reveal exactly what went wrong. Disasters don't just happen. They're triggered by a chain of critical events. Unravel the fateful decisions in those final seconds from disaster. Europe, Italy, Tessero, July 19th, 1985. The peaceful village of Tessero lies in the Stava Valley. Its idyllic surroundings make it a popular vacation spot. Today, visitors and locals alike are out enjoying the sunshine. 12.10 p.m. Umberto and Clemente de Florian are helping their father, Lucio, with his carpentry business. It was a typical summer's day. I was 15 years old, and me and my brother were going to do some work for our family business, owned by my father. They load their van and head up Stava Valley Road. 12.15 p.m. Back in Tessero, Alma Treadle is home from work, serving the lunch that her mother prepared for the family. That day I came back. The table was laid. Everything was ready to eat. 12.20 p.m. 20-year-old Lucia Morandini is helping her father Mario in his sports shop. That day I thought that seeing as a new supply of stock had just arrived, I'd choose a present for my father because it was his birthday in a couple of days' time. It's a perfect day in the Southern Alps. But further up the mountain, there is something that makes the Stava Valley far from normal. Since the discovery of rich mineral deposits in the 16th century, Prestival Mountain has been mined. Local residents coexist with the mining companies who work the mountain for fluorite, a valuable chemical substance. Extracting fluorite from mountain rock produces large amounts of waste material in the form of sand and water, known in mining as tailings. It's also the name given to the massive dams where the tailings are filtered off and collected. There are two of these tailings dams in the Stava Valley, one built above the other. 12.22 p.m. Umberto, Clemente, and their father Lucio are driving up the road from Tessero straight towards the dams. I remember that my father was singing because the next day was the 25th anniversary of the Tesero Choir. In town, Alma Treadle and her family are enjoying their lunch at the kitchen table. And in their sports shop, Lucio Morondini thinks she has found the perfect present for her father. We went to the storeroom. We opened the boxes and took out all the clothes. There was a nice tracksuit that I wanted him to try on. Over the years, the 100-foot-high tailings dams have become part of the scenery. Obscured by a dense pine forest, they are largely ignored by the locals. We all knew the dams were there. But we never imagined there would be the slightest danger. Today, all that will change. Twelve twenty-two and fifty-five seconds. Without warning, the dam bursts. At 
At first, no one knows what it is. I saw the smoke on the horizon and I asked you, what's that? It really looks like fire. At 12, 23 and 25 seconds, more than 60 million gallons of mud, sand and water from the two dams course down the valley. The town of Tassero is less than three miles away and directly in its path. We heard a huge noise. We thought it was roadworks. At 12.23 and 45 seconds, the colossal mudslide hurtles into the small town of Stava, where more than 100 hotel guests are having lunch. In an instant, they are all killed. Traveling at 50 